Welcome to the Chateau de Saint-Germain-des-Prés, where we're edging along with a couple of projects and we take a moment to celebrate Steve's Welshness. All right, I have managed to finish printing or cutting out all of the pieces for both doors. And now you can see what they're going to look like together. I think they work really, really nicely together, frankly. It's, it's gonna be really quite stunning in the, in the door. Next step is to get them framed up and in the door. There you go, guys. The final wood piece is in. Obviously just on the left-hand side. I've printed out the one for the right-hand side, but it needs to be glued together. But then this will be our new front door. I'm pretty excited about it. I think it looks really good. And of course, once we figure out what we're doing as far as paint goes and finishing, we will be able to take that out and paint it the same color as the doors. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna play with that as well. The doors need to be stripped and, uh, you know, basically taken back down to bare wood and then we will make them all look nice and pretty again and everything will be the same color. But apart from that, I think this is super exciting. I love the way that looks. What do you think? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, looks good. I can't wait to just like finish the whole thing, right? Like get it yeah. all sort of sanded down, repainted, everything blending in. Oh, I think gonna look amazing. And we've had a few people ask about the glass at the top there. And my thinking is that I might repeat the pattern of our tapestries that are on the second floor. So I've done it digitally. You've probably seen, I've done it a, a, a laser engraving of it for the print. Um, but yeah, I might do that across the top in the same panels, essentially. I think that'll look good. That's amazing. Okay, let's finish it. <laughs> okay, other window is ready to go. I just need to do what I did with the last one, glue it together and uh, frame it in. And how about that from the outside? So as you approach the house now, this is what you're going to see. So work continues on the bathroom up here. We've got the water heater here. Just getting that ready to install. All the little bits and pieces. And good news, the tub is here. So we just need to get that upstairs somehow. Subfloor is almost down. Uh, a couple more bits to go. And we've got the flooring that's going over top ordered. And we've got panels for these walls as well so that we can make it all watertight. So we're well underway. Things are moving. Big task still to do is to get this old water heater out of this tiny little space in here, which should be all kinds of fun, right, oh, Chris? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, because we don't know how heavy it is, and the brackets won't allow us to lift it up, and, you know, all that fun stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be entertaining. I'm finishing up the subflooring for the bathroom on the third floor. And as usual, the walls are not straight, which means I'm getting some gaps. You know, I wanna make sure that the seams stay relatively clean, but I need someone to appreciate this. So I measured this out and I fit this little piece that goes right in there like a glove. Look at that, covers that space perfectly. And now I can put the next piece on and we won't have any gaps. Well, there we have it. Now have a subfloor in the upstairs bathroom. It is all screwed down and very few squeaks. I think despite the uh, wonky walls did an all right job of uh, getting it nice and tight. All of the panels seem to be lined up quite well so I'm pretty happy with that. 
Now, next step is to get the flooring in here, which is on order and hopefully will be here next week. The bathroom is well underway. Progress is, is being made and we are almost there. Well, I say almost, we're maybe halfway there, but it's starting to feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you know, all these bits and pieces are coming together. All right, today we are back at our favorite MIUs in Breve. Yep. And, and the very first thing I spotted, huh. the Canadians amongst us. Oh yeah, we, 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 we're always drawn to the flag, man. That's, <laughs> that's hilarious. For some reason, there's the first thing I spotted was a Canadian flag. I don't even understand what just happened. But <laughs> well, there, there you it go. Is. <laughs> we actually came down to shop for some armoire and other pieces of furniture for the upstairs bedrooms. I swear, it's like long-lost lovers finding each other again <laughs> every time. <laughs> I can't. They're all my friends. I can't <laughs> help it. She just needs a little bit of oil. Actually, pretty good. Well, yeah, that looks pretty pretty good movement, actually. Well, for the wheel, but no. Oh, wait. No, I've disconnected it. Oh. Uh, yeah. 75 euro. That seems to fit the bill, I think. Yeah. So I think... This armoire looks really good shape. The mirrors are, are excellent. The, it's got hanging rails, which is something yeah. you don't often see. Yeah. Um, and it's quite pretty, actually. We might All have right. a winner. That one might be a winner. It's a winner. And Sarah spotted this one as well. It's really beautiful. Lovely wood on it and the brass fittings or details. Quite and lovely. And it's got got the little drawers and yeah. we could fit a rail in there yeah easily enough that is quite nice i like it that might be a winner too okay now we oh. just spotted this one look at this one it's gorgeous it's so pretty what a beautiful beautiful piece oh. i mean look at it the beautiful glass in there the details are still in intact and all for 180 euros. Oh my goodness. Keys all work. That's a big one. A couple of drawers. We could easily adjust that for hanging space. Yeah. Or we could do hanging on either side and leave yeah. the drawers. Oh yeah, you're right. <gasps> oh. That's very pretty. I think that one might come home with us. That is, I do like that one very much. I love, I love the fact that the details are all still intact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that one might one have. Might come home. Well, there's three. Yeah. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. Yeah. All right. We are back upstairs. Mm. Some of you had an idea uh, that didn't love our sort of half and half look that we were going for, and we think we agree. So we'll take it back to just a feature wall. Yeah, I think the paper on this wall is really still in good, good neck. So we'll just basically cut the corners on both sides, and we'll leave this wall with the wall and paint everything else. I think just, it'll finish it better. It was a good suggestion, thanks everybody. Yeah, and then we asked for colors, um, and some of you said gray, and eventually you'll get to know that gray is not a choice we're gonna make. <laughs> yeah. um, we'll leave it if it's there, but it's not one we're gonna actively go for. Yeah. Some people said lilac, which I liked, but I think mm. the one that stood out for me was a warm yellow. Yeah. So we've got yeah. Steve's Pantone book up. Yeah, I think, I don't know, there's something about it that I don't, I, I can't grab for it. It's not working for uh, you? Yeah, it doesn't gravitate, I don't gravitate towards it. Okay. Gray and yellow, I don't know, it's, it's, it might be a personal thing for me, I've never really liked that combination of colors. Okay. I couldn't tell you exactly why, but. All right. Frankly, gray with most colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do have an aversion yeah, to gray. Yeah. yeah. Gray has its places, yeah. but it's. Not my favorite, um, but I wonder. It's so I think what it comes down to is it's less of a tonal contrast, and I know that's that's going to sound odd, but because this color has a little bit of, I'm going to use the word dirtiness to it, but that's not really what I mean. I mean, okay. if you look at the CMYK build up here, it's got some cyan and some black in it. Okay. So in other words, it dirties the color up a little bit, and I think that works better with the gray. Okay. Um, rather than something that is really pure and bright, which will contrast too much, I think. With okay. It. That's my opinion. Um, 
I think somewhere in here okay. will work better myself. All right. The other thing about it is it, it feels a little more antique and, Right. Which is, again, it's a, a buzzword, but my problem with it being too bright a yellow is it feels too contemporary. Ah, uh, okay. You know, with the 12, because the 12 has a bit of a historic feel to it. I don't want it to feel overly bright and um, contrasty and contemporary when we've got something that feels a little older. Right. And it's a chateau, so it should have that feel. So this to me yeah. has a more antique feel. I am curious to look at the lilacs in that context. Sure. Like, are we talking? See, it's not bad actually, as well. Like, maybe even there. I mean, there is some irony with the amount of purple that we just took out downstairs, but then we did put some back in. Yeah. But then. I just feel that. I think mm -hmm. for up here, I'd like more of the yellow just to give it that little extra. Oh, sunshiny right. effect yeah. yeah yeah i mean i think that's the key right because this room has one window yeah it's a good size window and you get good light coming in here but it is only one window for 20 square meters so yeah it's yeah. a big big space for for that and uh, if anybody's got any opinions please let us know yeah well we have taken the wallpaper down and just left on this wall now yeah um, i feel it's more comfortable Hopefully everybody else does too. I'd like to, you know, it's nice to keep it, you know, at least uh, a bit of an homage to it. Because it's yeah. lovely paper. Yeah, I love it well. And it's in good shape, so we shall leave that as it is. Uh, and get the rest. I have a question for you. Uh, We've kind of got a light bluish gray on the trim and the doors. What are we doing with that? Ooh, that's a very good question. Are we just painting that in the yellow, or are we doing something else? Is that the part that goes gray? Maybe that's the part that goes gray. Maybe we find the gray that's in here and do the, the baseboards in the door. Okay. That might be quite nice, actually. Yeah. Maybe not all of the door, maybe some of the door? <laughs> and some of it yellow? Yeah, I mean, we could do... Maybe the panels in yellow and the rest in gray, or... Yeah. Something. Okay. Take a look at it. Seeing how March 1st just passed, which is the Welsh celebration St. David's Day, I thought I would come to that little plot of land that we have that we didn't know about a couple of years ago that is usually at this time of year completely covered in daffodils. So I'm going to go search and see uh, if I can find some and hopefully take some good photos. So one lonely little daffodil here. But I think if we go to my left, I'm starting to see a whole lot more. Isn't this stunning? There are indeed thousands and thousands of daffodils growing on the side of this hill. And this is actually part of our property. It's not attached directly to our property, but what a spectacular thing to see in the springtime. All the beautiful colors. Look, even Dexter's enjoying it. How about that for an end of a day? The sun has come out finally. Although looking at the forecast, we're not gonna see much of it in the next little while. But how stunning is this? I'm in this beautiful field. And behind me is the, the old viaduct. And below that, you'll see the little village of Saint-Germain-des-Prés. Not a bad place to call home. We are on day two of our adventure here in Wales, and we have come to St. David's Cathedral. There you are. St. David is the uh, patron saint of Wales, um, celebrated on the March 1st of St. David's Day. And this is the, ca the cathedral that is dedicated to his name. In the city, dedicated to his name. That's it. Spectacular place. Let's go check it out.